In today's world of programming, version control has become a basic necessity for all developers. And when we talk about version control, we often hear Git and GitHub. But before I explain the importance of Git and GitHub, I think it is critical to understand on why we even need a version control system. My name is Brugain and welcome to .NET Mastery. If you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure to do that now, that way you are notified when I release a new video. But let's get back to the main topic. Let's say you are programming and you are on day 1 of your programming where you basically write something in index.html and because of that index.html you have the following output. Now you go to work the next day and you modify that file, you add some more styling there, make it a little more pretty and you have the following output. The next day you go back to work, you go back to the same project here on your local machine, you modify index.html and make it even more pretty. But then business modified the requirement and now they are like nope, what you did on day 2 was good and we want to go ahead with that. The issue with that is when you modified the file here, you did not say what was there on day 2 in a separate file, you work on the same project every day and you make improvements or changes. So now when they are like no what we had on day 2 was better, you will manually have to modify index.html and remember what did you update and revert those changes back. Now right now it's about one file. What if you updated 10 files? It will be impossible for me to remember what were the exact changes that I made yesterday or it could even be a month ago. That is where version controlling comes into picture. What you can do is whenever you think you are in a stable code, you can commit that to version control system and be like okay, day 1 you will call it as version 1, day 2 version 2 and day 3 version 3 as an example. That way when you commit these changes, version control will track exactly what was updated in each version. And because of that, if after some time they are like nope, we want to go back to version 2, that's okay. Our source control system has already tracked what was there in version 2 and it can easily revert our code back to that version. Now let me walk you through other advantage or why we need source control versioning. Right now we were considering that there was only one developer who was working on the files. But what if there is multiple developers who are working on the same project? Let me walk you through on how it would work without any version control. So we have a project here, we have that project files and let's say Bob wants to work on the project. Now because multiple people wants to work on that, they have to do that turn by turn. So first Bob will take all the files that are there and on his local machine he will update and he will add let's say one more file there. After that if Sam wants to add one more requirement on the project, he will take all of those three files on his machine, do some additions there or update some files and let's say he also add one more file. Finally we have Tom in our team and he wants to work on the project as well. He will take all the 4 files here and update that with let's say a 5th file. Now this is ok, but the disadvantage here is only one developer can work on the file at a time because you have those files in a shared repository and you manually copy and paste. If Bob and Sam both of them take a copy of that project and later on if they try to paste that on the server where we have the code, things will not work. Well, it will work but basically who will paste their code at the end, only that code will be present. The other code will go away because at a time we can only have one copy. And the main headache is we will have to coordinate with all the developers that hey, are you working on this project? Okay, if you are not, then I can work on that project and do my updates. But that is not a realistic scenario when you have multiple developers in your team and things will never work out. In order to solve all the problems here, 
we have version controlling system. Now how does that work? Let's say we have the three developers, Tom, Sam and Bob here and now the project files will be hosted on some cloud server. All the developers when they are working on the project will install Git in their local machine and then the cloud server itself will maintain a history. So whoever commits anything, the cloud server will track that and it will have all the history that will solve our first problem. So let's say when we added all the files on the cloud server, it was like okay, I added the initial files and that is version 1 of the project. After that, Tom wants to update some files there. So what Tom will do is, so Tom will basically pull down the repository on his local kit and from their local kit, he will work on something called as a workspace. When he updates all the files and does the testing if that looks good, he can push or commit those changes back. Now push or commit is basically like saving changes in the remote repository. What I mean by remote repository is the cloud where we are saving all the files. So now when Tom saves all his changes and pushes them to the remote repository, the remote repository will add a versioning there and it will be like okay, we have a version 2 here and that is pushed by Tom. After that if Sam gets a new requirement that he has to work on, he will pull down the remote repository on his local machine and at the same time let's assume Bob also gets a new requirement so he will also pull down the changes from the remote repository. Now here the order is not critical. Once you pull down on your machine, you can work on that and take all the time that you need for your requirement. So even though Sam pulled down the changes first, if Bob's work is complete here, he can push and commit those change. Once Bob commits his change, we will add one more version to the tracking history and now it's version 3. When Sam is done here, they will basically push or save their code to the remote repository and that will create one more version. Now one thing that I will tell is when Sam will commit his change, he will basically also pull down from the remote server, that way Bob's changes are not lost there. Now that is a little technical on how things will work there. I do not want to go into all the technicalities here on how the push and pull works, but everything is synchronized and none of the changes will be lost here. That is the beauty of the source control versioning system. I hope with that you have a basic understanding of how version controlling will solve all the issues that we had without any version control system. With that you can see the power of version controlling system and how it will help enhance our development when multiple developers are working on the same project or even if it is a single developer it will still track all the history and you can always revert back to previous version if there was a bug or anything else. With that in place, now let me come back to what is Git. Git is an open source distributed version control system for your local machine and with that we can track our changes, roll back some changes or create branches to work on some other changes and much more. But again the limitation here is that Git is for local machine. But when we work on a code in production, we are working with multiple developers in a team who works on the same code base. And that is where something like GitHub comes into picture. GitHub is an online service that runs Git on cloud, but along with that GitHub provides services like pull request, ticket tracking, CICD and much more. Now there are other services like GitHub who runs Git on cloud like Azure DevOps but GitHub is the most common and widely used. And that is what we will cover in this course. We will focus on Git using command line and not on any graphical user interface because command line is the one that will help you master the fundamentals. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like the video, 
leave a comment and if you have not subscribed to the channel make sure to do that now that way you are always notified when i release a new video like always if you want detailed courses on the same topic i have a link in the description and you can even find all of those courses on dotnetmastery.com that being said i hope to see you guys in some other video